All right, guys. You know what time it is. It's the time for the absolute official healer tier list for Mythic Plus for Season 1 of War Within. Here's the rules. I'm talking about high keys. Do whatever you want in pugs. Pick the best healer for pugs. Pick the best healer player. If you need curse to spells, you get it to curse to spell. If you don't, then don't. We're talking about overall best healer for high keys. Not delves, not anything else. Second rule. This is a rule for you guys. No ties. There ain't going to be no cop outs. Every single rank will be exactly the rank relative to everything else. All right, this is taking into account what I'm guessing is every tuning we have now. This is not taking into account any tuning that we have coming up in the anniversary patch. What classifies as a high key? 12 or higher. That's what I, that's my rule. All right, we're going to randomize it by doing it the exact order that it gives us. I'm also going to share my thoughts on each healer and how I think it fits into the meta. This priest, this priest, surprising to a lot of people, I'm going to put in the A tier. This priest got turbo mega buffed at the start of the expansion after the first week of heroic. It does insane amounts of healing in five mans. Also, this priest does very, very good uncapped AoE damage, not just with its void thingy and with its uh, guy, but also with PI. You can PI a DPS and do a lot of AoE damage. On top of that, it's good for surviving one shots. You have barrier, you have shields, you have rapture, lots of ways to survive one shotty stuff in high key. Also, Shadow Priest very likely to not be good, so I think this Priest will fit in well and you'll very unlikely be uh, able to use your buffs, or rather, you'll be very unlikely to not get good utilization of your buffs. However, some problems with this Priest, why it's not S tier. Number one, if you don't have your Mind Bender up, which will happen sometimes until you get very high haste, your healing will turn to zero. You basically only can do good healing during Mind Bender, and if there's a lot of movement, or if you mess up, or if something bad happens, this is very big danger also this priest very little utility in terms of stops you have only fear and no kick no anything also this priest no curse to spell no poison to spell all of these things make this priest not the greatest healer in pugs however i still think it's a very solid healer and is doing a ton of healing in five mans so this priest very good at healing not good at much else holy paladin holy paladin is next i'm gonna place it in the b tier Holy Paladin, I think, is all around a very, very good healer, and I would almost consider it the, like, ultimate mid healer. It can do everything you need to do. It has good utility, brings good other stuff. It's not necessarily OP. It's just all around does everything you need it to. I think Holy Paladin is a great addition to any team, and I think Holy Paladin will be able to compete in the highest keys. It might not have the healing output of Arsham. It might not have the damage output of some of the other healers, but it does everything very, very well unfortunately the nerfs to healing that are coming out with mythic week mostly affected by raid and it's going to be a little bit frustrating for m plus but i think holy paladin is still very solid and unlike other tier list makers look i'm i'm saying it like it is i'm putting b as mid i know everyone likes to say b is the bottom tier because they're scared of the people in the comments how do you put this in c tier look i'm gonna do it all right so holy paladin solid healer solid all around doesn't have any major strengths but also doesn't have any major weaknesses IMO also doesn't have curse to spell which is a little annoying next holy priest I'm gonna put holy priest hmm look I'm gonna do it we're just gonna stir up some controversy I'm gonna put holy priest in the C tier to me, Holy Priest is just, I don't really understand the appeal of it. Its damage is okay, but you have to really, really push hard and play for damage and optimize for damage. It's a priest, so it doesn't really bring that much in terms of utility and like extra stuff to your team. It doesn't have a curse to spell. It doesn't have a poison to spell. It's basically just a worse version of this priest. In lower keys, lower to mid keys, I feel like you'll have a just fine time as Holy Priest because it's very easy to play. You can play whack-a-mole. You can just spam heal things like curses and diseases if you're pugging just make sure you bring somebody on your team that can remove those and even if you can't remove them it's not the end of the world but i think as you get into higher keys one of the biggest weaknesses that i find with holy priest is you need heavy burst aoe healing to deal with many of the more difficult bosses and you'll notice for paladin for example they're playing beacon of virtue because of how high the demand is for aoe healing but holy priest just doesn't have good aoe healing and i think holy priest to me so far is one of the worst healers and the healers that I enjoy playing the least in high keys. Nothing wrong with it in terms of like, you know, just vibing, but I think the more difficult the content and competitive content you get into, the less you'll like it.
All right, Mistweaver. So I think Mistweaver, I'm going to play solidly here next to Holy Paladin above Holy Priest in the B tier. Healing wise, I think Mistweaver is a very, very solid healer. It does a lot of healing, and in some regards, you might say it's better than Holy Paladin. Mistweaver has a lot of really strong burst AoE healing buttons. You have Revival, you have your new Hero Talent ability, you have Shaylun's, you have a lot of tools to deal with passive damage by fist weaving, and a lot of big AoE heals to heal through the tougher mechanics. I'm fairly confident Mistweaver will be able to heal all the way up to the highest keys. Some problems with Mistweaver. Similar to the other healers that we've listed so far, it doesn't have a curse to spell. Especially compared to Dispriest, Mistweaver's damage is very, very low. Mistweaver damages beans. If you're playing with a full melee comp, stuff like Fury Warrior, you can get good utilization out of the buff, but increasing physical damage of your party isn't really that useful compared to things like Fortitude or Diva Aura or Mark of the Wild. It brings one of the worst buffs. Its utility is also kind of whatever. I would say it's great for hugs better so than priest because you have like stops you have a short cooldown kick you have ring of peace you have lots of good stuff to use as mistweaver however for high keys there's nothing really separating mistweaver from other healers for example with paladin being able to bop really dangerous mechanics being able to bubble things you know being able to like gs something whatever like mistweaver just doesn't really do that much crazy stuff that the other healers can however still a very good healer and i think this is like a good pug healer i think out of the healers so far if you're saying who should i invite to my plus 10 key i actually think Mistweaver is the best of the four next healer preservation evoker i'm gonna put preservation evoker at the top of the a tier ahead of disc priest preservation evoker i think does the most healing it does an absolute crap ton of healing and if you're playing very well you can pump infinite heals early on in the war within one of its major healing tools with chrono warden was nerfed or bug fixed or whatever. So it's not quite doing as much healing as it was on the beta for some people early on. However, it still pushes health bars up better than any other healer in my opinion. You do have the range limitation and the range can be annoying. In a high level group, it's not as annoying, but it can be very frustrating on specific fights where you need to be spread out. For example, like the last boss of Necrotic Wake or the last boss of Stone Vault where you just always need to be spread out and people are running around, your healing power is limited in that regard however i think it's depending on the situation equal to or better than dispriest healing damage wise preservation of ochre is omega solid with damage its damage rotation is so easy compared to every other healer and it's so global efficient you just do one flame breath and then one living flame and you're doing giga damage and then you basically just spam one button the whole time and you're out dpsing nearly every healer However, some issues with Preservation Evoker. Oh, also on top of this, I also want to mention Cauterize. While you don't necessarily have a Curse to Spell, you do have Cauterize, so you do have one or more Curse to Spells every minute. So I do think Preservation Evoker is there. You also have a kick, but the kick is not great. It's a like a 40 second cooldown kick and it's a short range. Those sorts of kicks are very annoying because they can't be assigned to stop anything. You can't sit a Preservation on one, one caster because its cooldown is so long. So some downsides of preservation preservation's raid buff is probably one of the worst raid buffs if not the worst raid buff even worse than Mistweaver. probably it just doesn't really bring that much in terms of helping your team on top of that there's a very real possibility that aug is a good class and if aug is there you're losing a lot of the benefit of your utility things like rescue or cauterize aren't really that useful if you have an aug evoker that can do all of those things as well and having two of one class is not going to be great and that's one of the downsides to prez i think however i don't want to understate how much healing and damage prez can put out prez is putting out giga giga healing and damage and this is a very very good healer next resto druid to me this is the toughest one this is the toughest one here hmm Everyone in the chat saying F. Here's the thing. Do I lean in on high keys or do I lean in on lower keys? How about this? I'm going to talk through Druid before I place it, okay? I'm not sure yet. So here's the thing. Resto Druid has the best raid buff out of everything. It brings Mark of the Wild. Every other Druid spec doesn't look that great. Even Guardian Druid, in my opinion, doesn't look that great. I, in my opinion, only strongly considering it because of Mark of the Wild. But if Mark of the Wild wasn't a thing, I don't think people 
people would consider Guardian Druid. Resto Druid is doing the most amount of damage right now from any other healer. Especially if you don't need to do much healing, it does giga damage. It can do good AoE damage, especially with the Starfire buffs that are happening, and it's giving Mark of the Wild to your casters, also improving AoE damage. Resto Druid also has the best dispel. It dispels poison and curses, which are the two notorious ones. There's not too many diseases. Resto Druid also has a battle res, is generally pretty flexible. However, Resto Druid's healing sucks. It is the worst at healing its party than any other healer. I've said all of these good things about Resto Druid healing. It just can't heal. And in my opinion, it requires a very high level of skill to have all of those hots out and manage all of those hots. All right, I've decided where I'm going to put it. So here's the thing. At a high level, you can make this work, okay? I don't think people are really going to get heal checked that hard, and I think the best Resto Druids are going to be able to make it work. I also think the things that Resto Druid brings, if you are a skilled player, I'm going to put Resto Druid in B tier below Holy Paladin. I actually think that all of the pros that Resto Druid brings outweigh the fact that it sucks at healing. I know this might be a little bit copium, but Resto Druid's healing is getting buffed, and I think with a good team, you can make it work. I know it's a little bit wild. I think the biggest concern with Resto Druid is you might literally just get heal checked by some dungeons. But for example, think about how many keys where it won't necessarily matter, right? Where you won't necessarily need infinite amounts of healing. The biggest benefit to where I think you'll see Resto Druid potential is if some stuff gets nerfed and all like uh, damage and dungeons, which I think is almost a given at this point. And I also think that if AUG becomes meta and people do play like the raid buff comp with aug and druid and mage again i think realistically you can play resto druid and high keys maybe i'm huffing major copium but i personally think there's a better chance that you see a resto druid in a world first key than a misweaver all right Last is Resto Shaman. I think we all know where this one's going. Because we're ordering things, I think we have to put Resto Shaman in S tier. Resto Shaman overall right now just has so many things that you want out of a healer. It has the Curse to spell. You have Poison Cleansing Totem. You have a Raid buff that's very helpful. It, it helps your tank. It helps any class that uses Mastery. Earth Shield is permanently reducing damage that the tank is taking with how much White Swings are doing. You have tons of ability to increase the amount of max health your party has to deal with this burst AoE healing. You have a very short cooldown range kick. It basically has everything that the other healers have but on top of that it's healing actually owns it actually does a crap ton of healing i would say one concern with shaman is if you do need to do like tons and tons of healing you are a little bit more limited you do rely on either your major healing cooldowns or mana and you can run out of those things you know a class like this priest has short cooldown mindbender a class like prez evoker you have short cooldown life bind with spirit bloom shaman will run out of juice eventually but for all intents and purposes and if things are going well is very strong i mean certainly if i think you can do high keys on a resto druid you can do the highest keys and maybe more as a resto shaman downsides of resto shaman i think that ellie and enhance are both in very good spots right now and similar to prez depending on your comp you may decide that you don't want to run double shaman again things like your poison and curse to spell that can get taken care of by an ellie shaman just with poison cleansing totem things like your raid buff go away and the appeal of bringing a class like dis priest or resto druid or prez evoker or holy paladin go up when you already have a shaman in your party other than that that, though shaman doesn't have too many weaknesses there's not too many downsides and i also want to say that i think shaman and prez are both good enough that you can very easily run double shaman or double evoker and keys and do very 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 high keys one also good thing for shaman is that it has a ton of build flexibility this priest and prez evoker are more or less just taking the same build in every single key and just sort of winging it and can't really adjust too much to situations other than like oh i I need my dispel or i need this shaman has a ton of flexibility in terms of like do you want to play totemic do you want to play farseer do you need better earth shields like do you want to play prim wave do you need to cast chain heals do you not need to cast chain heals resto shaman has a ton of flexibility in terms of utility and types of healing that you bring and yeah i think i think this is my high key tier list i think we're gonna see a lot of resto shamans in the top 20 i think we're gonna see several prez evokers and dis priests 
potentially. And I think we'll see specialists of Holy Pally, Resto Druid, and Mistweaver potentially. I mean, let's be honest, there's not too many Mistweaver specialists, but I think it's good enough that it's up a level. Yeah. And then Holy Priest exists. There, there's the tier list. We waited this long, but we had to do it. We had to put out a tier list. And if this goes on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Now I have to do a pug tier list. Okay. If someone applies to your group and they're all equal item level and skill, what should I invite? Very quickly. Okay. Shaman, Mistweaver, um, maybe this. This is probably what I'm thinking of in terms of if it's a pug, what would I bring? Now, keep in mind, utility plays into a factor a lot. So, for example, if you need Curse to spell, if you need Bloodlust, obviously you're bringing a Shaman. Obviously, you would prefer Prez over a Mistweaver. But I'm just strictly talking about what you need. So, some reasons of stuff at the bottom, okay? Holy Priest, again, I just don't really see the appeal of Holy Priest. Like, the lower you go, the higher this goes up because you're basically just assuming that your healer is done dumber and dumber as you move down the ranks and holy priest is just going to be roughly equal no matter what because you're basically just pressing i don't know i don't want to say that like that's not entirely true but you get what i'm saying right the more simple the healing becomes the better holy priest is and the worse dis priest becomes like eventually you get to a level where people don't understand how dis priest works and you just never want to invite a dis priest like you just have guys spamming flash heal right who are like new to the game and who are learning and you you know all, all look we love people who are new to the game we just don't love when they're healing our keys is this priest um resto druid the problem with resto druid is most of them are just going to be monkeys who are sitting in cat form trying to do tons of dps and then post it in the druid discord and while that might be effective sometimes it's not really someone that you want to heal your keys uh prez evoker is sort of hit or miss i think prez actually does a crap ton of healing and is like if you're playing prez correctly it can just absolutely strong arm carry the shit out of your team but if the prez isn't that good or if you have a team that isn't really cooperative operating as much then i can see prez being annoying holy pally i think is just a little bit harder to play than these two classes like i think in general aoe healing and getting through heal checks with these two classes is just going to be easier than each pal these classes are sort of like the they can heal but it takes a little bit more skill than these two and then these classes are like their healing or something about them is weaker and also they may be more difficult and, but here's the thing right and this is this is something that dorky said and i really love this and i'm gonna keep echoing this utility in pugs is so freaking important okay if you need curse to spell bring four curse to spells if you need lust like make sure you bring lust if you want kicks like bring kicks you know what i'm saying like figure out exactly like if you have a bunch of melees then having a shaman is going to be pretty good right like if you have physicals like bringing a misweaver could be good right if there's a guy who's high item level and he plays you know holy paladin bring holy paladin figuring out exactly what your team needs is way more important because here's the thing when you're doing high keys you're more or less playing with the same team in every comp so you need to like weigh all of these things in pugs you don't need to weigh them at all you can literally invite one guy because he's good in this one team in this one dungeon and then tybb and never see him again so take advantage of that fact of pugs because you guys have that luxury that us high keyers don't have all right impromptu tier list but it needed to happen